Hi guys, Matt McKeever here. So I'm really excited to bring you this video. This is part five of my Burn the Lie Street video series. So in this video, we're gonna be focusing on the refinancing portion of the Burr investing strategy. But so just a quick reminder, Burr stands for buy, renovate, rent, refinance, and repeat. And essentially each video in this series focused on one of those steps. So in part two of this video series, we focused on buying a lie street. So the exact strategies and tactics I use when I buy a rental property. In part three of this video series, we focused on renovating. Strategic renovations I do on each of my rental properties try and maximize value but while minimizing my capital output. In part four of this video series, I showed you exactly how I rented out my rental property and how I was able to increase the rent because I had done those strategic renovations that make tenants want your property. And part five, which is this video, we're gonna be focusing on exactly how I refinanced this property at $150,000, which meant I was able to essentially pull out all my initial investment from this property within 120 days of buying it. So just a quick reminder of exactly how this Eli Street property worked. I bought it for $110,000, which was 22,000 under asking. I then did strategic renovations on the property and those strategic renovations cost $10,800. I then re-rented the property out, significantly increasing the cash flow. And so in this video, I'll be showing you how I refinanced $150,000, which meant I was able to get a $120,000 mortgage, which is an 80% loan to value. Let's get into it. So initially when I bought the property, I put $5,000 as a deposit when I made my offer. I then had to come up with the remainder of that $22,000 down payment. And so after legal fees, land transfer taxes, and registration fees, it essentially cost me $24,643 out of pocket to buy this property. And so I spent $1,462 on legal fees, which honestly, I think that's a little high. Tell me in the comments what you guys are paying for your uh, paying in legal fees when you close on a rental property. And then I paid $974 in land transfer tax and just various registration fees. And then $207 just related to a small adjustment for property tax. So then I spent my $10,800 on strategic renovations, which meant I was $35,443 out of pocket, all in on this property. So essentially $35,500 total out of pocket to get this property done. So then when I go to refinance it at $150,000 value, I'm able to get a new $120,000 mortgage. The $120,000 mortgage pays off the old $88,000 mortgage and then forwards me $32,000 in new money. So after legal fees and a few other things, I'm left with $31,825 that was forwarded to me uh, by the bank for the new mortgage, which means I'm out of pocket $3,620 to buy this property. So a cash flowing duplex I now own and it only cost me $3,620 of my own money. And I was able to do this in 120 days, which is the maximum time the bank will allow you to do it. So no matter what, if you're implementing this burn investing strategy and you're doing it right, you could do this three times in a year with the same money if you had it timed perfectly. And so that's what's really powerful about this burn investing strategy is just the increased velocity it gives to your money. It really allows you to really stretch things further and acquire a much larger asset base in a shorter period of time while still maintaining a 20% equity buffer in each of your properties. So the exact way this refinance worked is I used what's called an improvements plus mortgage or mortgage plus improvements. Um, and it's just going to depend on which exact bank you use, the exact terms they uh, use in regards to it. But essentially the way it works is there's two appraisals. Both occur at the time of purchase. The first one's going to be based just confirming the current purchase price. The second one's going to be focused on estimating the after rental value. And so the way that works is you're going to provide the appraiser quotes on the work you're going to get done or a list of the scope of work you're going to undertake and the expected costs you'll incur in order to complete it. And so this is a very important step. So make sure you're really prepared, be well organized when you meet with the appraiser and already be, have planned what you're going to say to them. Don't just shoot from the hip. This is too important. If the second appraisal comes in lower than you like, you can request a different appraiser, change the scope of work, or accept that you'll have more money tied up in this property than you initially planned. That's essentially your course of action there. You can choose to do one of those three things. So you'll have 120 days to complete this, and that's just kind of the terms of the way these uh, improvements plus mortgages work. 
and the appraiser, once you've completed all your renovation work within that 120 day window, the appraiser comes out and will just confirm that you've done the work that you said you were going to do and that's to the standard that uh, you'd been quoted. So yeah, so that's exactly how this refinance process works. Uh, it's very straightforward, it's very simple, anyone can do this. And I hope this video made the whole process seem a lot less intimidating now. At the end of the day, it just comes down to your numbers. Just know your numbers. I'm only out of pocket $3,620 to own this cash flowing duplex. Think about how many properties you could buy if you were to implement the system again and again and again. And so that's essentially what part six of this video series is gonna be, me starting it all over again on a new property. But so if you want to know the exact cash flow on this property, I'll tell you once I get to 500 subscribers. So make sure you're sharing this on social media. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, that great big beautiful red subscribe button. Just click it and uh, yeah. Thanks for taking the time to watch. I really appreciate it. Bye.